I bless you all. Let you all open all your three eyes and manifest the powers of Mahasuda Shiva. Om Nityananda Paramashivam. Om Nityananda Paramashivam. Om Nitya.
ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪರಮ ಶಿವೋಹಂ
नो वीडियो विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षीभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा Welcome, welcome all of you, all of the stars, viewers, samaji, satsangi. Welcome all of you, and love and respects. All the Kailashians, e Kailashians, all the disciples, devotees, and everyone else who have gathered from different corners of the world, from various different time zones, to this divine enlightening audience for the avatar. With His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam, with thousands of you watching us via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all e Kailashians and Kailashians watching us via Tuber video conferencing, we welcome all of you to this enlightening divine audience with the avatar Swamiji, the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, His Divine Holiness, Jagat Guru Mahasanidhanam, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. He is a reviver of the great cosmic borderless Hindu nation, the only Hindu nation, heir of the enlightened civilization, Kailasa. This is the Hindu University, which is the large, world's largest Hindu university, with campuses, with extended campuses in over 150 countries, just continuously collecting, organizing, preserving. Decoding, time capsuling, and spreading the 20 million source books of Hinduism and the 64 sacred arts and sciences like Ayurveda, music, dance, art, sculpting. His Nityananda order of monks, the, so the sovereign order of Kailasa, the Nityananda order of monks and nuns in the Hindu diaspora are continuously working on giving a super conscious breakthrough to humanity and to bring the global peace. He has been faced with more than hundreds of assassination attempts and numerous character assassination attempts are still going on, a huge persecution and attack which is still going on Yet, he continues, continues, and continues to contribute to humanity. Today, we are already on the day 14 of Paramashivoham, level 2, season 10, with hundreds of people attending from all over the world. And with Paramashivaganas going on, where so many hundreds of people who are inspired, who are waiting to be a part of Swamiji's mission, waiting to become a part in some or the other small way possible to become part of this sacred mission of Swamiji's have been for a very long time. There are so many projects, so much of um, work that is going on with the Paramashiva Ganas and the recent Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations. The whole festivity is always round the corner in the Nityananda Sangha and the whole Kailasa festivity is always round the corner and it's just full, it, the whole breeze is having always festivities around. And with also Swamiji every day coming live for the 
Nityananda Satsang and leading the two billion Hindus around the world as a supreme pontiff of Hinduism into living a super conscious life and having a conscious breakthrough. If all of you are here for the first time, and even if you have been here multiple times, one thing that I would suggest all of you to do is to go visit nityanandapedia.org a website that comprises like literally now which has all every single day the avatar's daily is there in it what was he doing with pictures we have videos everything collected if you just have a, even a look at it like recently i was seeing there's so many people after swamiji announced in the satsang on ganesh chaturthi to go visit nityanandapedia.org so many people have already gone and started their research and many of them are already talking about how he was born in 1978 and how even at the age of 3 he was completely focused only on his mission of reviving hinduism his toys were not anything else but just deities he used to play with deities he grew up with the deities he grew up with great gurus his entire ecosystem was filled with enlightened beings literally the entire ecosystem spiritual enlightenment ecosystem in tiruvannamalai all the enlightened beings there literally birthed the avatar we have evidences we can even see how what was the book that swamiji had like how the 108 upanishads book like this every book that swamiji has read not of course not all the books but at least many books that whatever we were able to retrieve from his childhood archives are all available you can see the deities that he carved with his own hands he was as young as 6 year old how a five year old child how as a five year old child how he fed ganesha like this every year by year day by day we have his daily you all can go and visit its nityanandapedia.org when you just go and see you'll understand the huge amount of work that swamiji has been untiringly doing continuously that are even pictures where you can see how even the brick was laid by him he built the buildings physically with few more people he built them physically he didn't have see many of us know to become a even you want to become a huge you want to have a huge whether it's a business or you want to be huge in any field how much it takes and how much support is also needed it's not just that one person can decide and do it you of course you will be having some other the way you will have someone as a support but there's absolutely nobody to support except for swamiji will keep telling parameshwar is there for me because he is parameshwar our that self but continuously just that one thing from nothing literally he owned nothing he possessed nothing when he was in doing his parivrajika yatra where he walked the length and breadth of india with bare foot for almost 9 months he was walking bare foot with only nothing he wakes up for a kamandalu nothing else and today he is the head the supreme pontiff of leading the two or two billion hindus all across the globe okay. he has established the only hindu nation in the world kailasa actually this whole um i just wanted to share because there are many many people i'm sure that are here from tamil nadu from so many other places around the world to after seeing swamiji release the 
Kailasa currency and Reserve Bank of Kailasa because when people still feel very, there will be so much of inhibition to people to even tell, oh, I'm going to start a business, especially in the time of, uh, you know, where people in their life, where people are being persecuted. If you have one or two people who deserve in your life, you will feel so, that time will not be the uh, right time for you to start anything. You will just feel so withdrawn. Even when the whole humanity, when so many people, of course not the whole humanity, because there are millions of us who not just revere and worship Swamiji as an avatar, but who are inspired, who just try to live like Swamiji every single day of our life, at least 1% of our life. So, anyway, at this time, there are so many people ganged up, anti-Hindu elements ganged up to attack this hard work and Swamiji's mission. Just seeing the sheer confidence, sheer boldness where Swamiji told, no, what come what may, I am going to, Swam when Swamiji made the statement that I am back and I will not let anything happen to Hinduism, Swamiji did not just tell it because many people thought that's all, just Swamiji made a destination, maybe that's all, but Swamiji has made the Kailasa official and also has officially released the Reserve Bank of Kailasa and its currency also. This very release made people like completely shocked. And I said there are many of you here come just to know what is this all about? How can a normal a normal human being? How can some normal human being so short in a very short span of time? How can he declare a nation and do it? See, that was if you see the headlines in all the newspapers, the news carry, all the news articles carry, big headline. He did what he declared. That was the headlines in so many news articles. And many people were also, I was seeing some more videos and I was reading what different people are talking about this. I saw so many people were just shocked and amazed by how Swamiji is able to provide everything free of cost. I wanted to tell, I wanted to tell this to all of you. I just saw somebody who was uh, sharing in a video telling how he was amazed to know that Swamiji is giving free education and he's giving free food to people, which is something that nobody can even think of these days. Like you may do a charity, maybe like you give some money and some organization does for maybe a few days. But how is it possible to do a huge amount of, this is not even, I don't know, because the term charity is so differently understood by us. Continuously, see, I've been in the Adinam. Of course, now I'm out. But when I was in the Adinam, almost seven years from my age of 14, I have been studying in the Gurukul, Nityananda Gurukul. My education, you all know, how much it takes, right? Like, especially if you're in India, at least from my, what I have heard from my friends, my Indian friends, I know to get a seat in the college, how much you need to pay, how much you, of expenses, that even if you're studying in a school, there's so much expense. You Many people cannot even imagine of studying in an international school because there is so much expense behind it. Every single day, even if you, even if you are going to be uh, just uh, sitting and studying, not you like you already got the seat, and you are going to just be studying there. You have so many project works. You need to pay this donation, that donation. You have to um, have like for sports, you need to give separate fees. You need to give separate fees for your, and you need to buy a, a new uniform. You need to buy many craft materials that they're telling. You need to buy many stuff, like for like maybe a book, maybe the books. For everything, there is so much cost involved. What I'm telling is true for you. You can just put it in the comments now. How much have you paid for your school? Like, you know, right? If you either have kids or even if you're someone who's just studying, you know how much money is involved just in studies just for education I am, I am still talking only about your till your higher secondary I'm not even going to college 
even within your higher secondary you have so much to pay how many how much of amount is involved for the be it the bus charge or you want to pay a vehicle everything so much money is involved right imagine what if i said to you what if i told you that there are more than hundreds of kids who have been given this completely for free absolutely not a single penny is taken not even for their own dress not even for their housekeeping items everything is offered completely free of cost actually i just wanted to share here see it is not just like we have i'm sure many of us may have come across some ngos in um, our life where there are kids who stay who are uh, affected in their life and to help them there are ngos that uh, get donations and that does this but one thing that i've seen like one thing i wanted everyone to understand mainly is all of these kids and even their families that are staying in the adinam are supported the, not just see all this money so swamiji it is never spoken out much because swamiji tells it's too small because more importantly it is a conscious breakthrough the the conscious lifestyle that is given organic food safe ambiance completely international standard education see just even if you take this education aspect as i was sharing like if i'm really telling more than 100 is too small number hundreds of children because the number keeps adding and these children it's not that we are we are orphans no all the children have very good parents who are software engineers people who work in infosys people from all top companies it's like it's not that any of them are poor children they're all from rich background they actually from all types of background i wouldn't say just rich children even uh, children from poorer families everyone all types and from all walks of life children are there but none of them are orphans everybody has parents to all of us like for and i'm telling talking just about mine i have been here for 7 years completely my entire education my college everything completely free of cost absolutely no, no you, you actually even if you ask the children's parents they would say not a single penny not even for our uniform like for the clothes that we wear not even for the clothes that we wear even a single penny was taken imagine and see is what would you call this as and our education was nothing low i had international standard education i had international gcse syllabus as the education that i studied i've done courses in business i've finished all these it's not that i have i it's not i i had any poor education i had very good education and all these absolutely free of cost why just because parameshwar says in the agama that when the disciple comes for education it's a like education knowledge is for free so much it is this entire thing you might be asking many of you might be wondering what is this something crazy like how can someone do it like there is no maybe how, how can that even be possible there's no way that they get benefited out of this that is something unique about swamiji in any decision he t- he makes anything he does it's absolutely selfless so it's very difficult for us as normal humans to even comprehend it as normal humans for us to even understand it see why do you think that so many people are attacking see by now if you are here if you are watching i'm very sure most of you would be knowing a little bit background about okay swamiji is being is being attacked persecuted continuously you might have come across some news articles you might have come across social media posts 
where like a lot of his character assassination is going on. Still no, it doesn't stop. It's still people are trolling, people are trying to abuse, people are still trying to attack. Why? Because of some and when if I tell this in front of Swamiji, like if I tell Swamiji is giving us completely free education, he tell hey, this is very small. What you're telling is it's too trivial. That is why it's not even, we don't even talk so, uh, like, a lot about that. Because what Swamiji is giving for Swamiji, it is our enlightenment that is most important. He makes sure nothing is stopped. Understand, when I am telling here, everything free of cost, I am not just talking about education. Even, if you just see, in this last one year, how much you would have spent, be it for your food, be it for your stay, be it for your phone. We have like the best mobiles, we have the best laptops, all high end. Nothing is denied to us. Nothing. Not just denied, but everything is like showered for us. It's not even like there's nothing to worry about. And also one main thing that we all need to understand Sri Kailasa or this entire thing is not something that has happened yesterday or today. It has been more than 25 years of Swamiji's hard work. See, I'm not even talking about the time where Swamiji himself from the age of three started practicing yoga nor not even the time where Swamiji himself used to practice various different uh, enlightenment uh, uh, techniques and Swamiji himself experienced enlightenment just at the age of 12 and started manifesting powers. Not even at the time where Swamiji went for Parivrajaka for 9 years, going house to house and uh, healing people and changing people's lives. No. After all of that, Swamiji, when Swamiji realized his avataric mission, meaning when Swamiji declared to the humanity the purpose of his advent on planet Earth, from that time onwards, what do we what do we think when we see a leader? When we see someone who is a guru, maybe they'll sit in a, a golden throne, they will just give speech, 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 speech. It's very rare that we see the hard work of people. But actually, with Swamiji, it's, I would say it is entirely different. People can hardly see Swamiji not doing the hard work. Every day. This, the first ever um, Adinam that Swamiji started was in Avati Palayam, a place in Tamil Nadu, down south in India. And it was just three brick walls, the basic brick structure that was built with one thatched roof. And there will be a wooden um, plank kind of a thing where Swamiji will sit. And Swamiji was attending to people and healing. Today, not just building the only Hindu nation Sri Kailasa in the world, but also there are thousands of Kailasas around the world. Anyone, just be like there are millions of us waiting to give Swamiji like some whatever we think as the best, maybe something so a beautiful big throne, everything. But still, Swamiji's simplicity, you will see Swamiji, just one simple Rudraksha Mala. Nothing much. Just one simple dhoti, angavastram and that's all. Just that simple, the most simplest clothes. See, why I am telling this is because there are many people who tell, oh my God, how, how is this possible? Like, you know, Swamiji, though there are, there is such a huge growth in the last 25 years. Every time there has been expansion, Swamiji's contributions towards the humanity has increased more and more and more. I think we should also talk about like, you know, when how people, so many of us today to get food, even if you're in a, we are very, even if you're in a very uh, urban area, like you're in a most populated city or you are in a very high-end place, food is scarce. You may get food like products, but healthy food is really, really limited. 
then we know especially if you're some who's working on your own and if you're earning on your own you know how much it costs to buy one plate of food here for the past 16 years which is 20 the past 20 years billions have have been served free organic food understand not just free food but free organic food today we are healthy we are able to be like joyful fully even during this pandemic being able to be immune to this is because we have been grown in the gurukul for the last 7 years that we have grown in gurukul we have only eaten organic pure sattvic food and not a single penny we have paid for it till now it's been completely taken care by swami ji completely like this not just two of us but there are so many children so many adinavasis and e kailashians all across the locations who are there in many other kailashas all across the globe and millions of devotees and even normal people who come like for example if someone if a, if a person decides to go on like a mambalation or on a tiruvannamalai hill in the kailasa there in tiruvannamalai we will be have serving free food free organic but some is very particular about the quality of the food that we are serving and everything absolutely free of course it's still going on during especially now when the pandemic is happening you know how much it's it's very difficult the whole economy is just in a very imbalanced state it's fluctuating we all know about it and many of us are really really being very aware conscious about like making sure we are not uh, spending too much we are keeping all say, trying to uh, save the money just for ourselves somji he is going on and on reaching out to more people giving uh, free food to them many people even like if people who are not able to afford masks and, and even to many countries free masks have been given free food healthy food rich healthy organic food actually i just wanted to share one incident that we all of us know somji's dimension as an avatar we see pada puja satsang and of course the the depth of knowledge that swamiji gives all of us but it's very few of us who are living in the adinam in the monastery campus that we can see swamiji in a more i would say more closer uh, dimension that we can see swamiji's compa- like how swamiji compassionately gives people like we can see more i would say a closer dimension of swamiji that one of the like first times that i saw that i still ha- i still remember that whole incident that once um, swamiji was talking about uh, giving the agamic dresses to the kids and um, of course we all were even our dresses everything were given in the adinam only it is still given in the adinam only and swamiji wanted we all were given normal dresses like i mean other normal dresses that people wear like that with their dresses given of good quality but swamiji had one Uh, it has to be agamic so it the the sacred uh, saffron robes that we are wearing and uh, it was for three days and, and, and actually, it was supposed to be like swamiji is also very particular about all of us having the best quality uh, dresses and the best to stitch like like completely even i don't think your parents would you know care so much yeah so um, when swamiji had uh, told that swamiji told that till every kid gets that because immediately people when swamiji tells of course like everyone immediately went and they were uh, looking for the best of quality because swamiji he, swamiji will never settle with something normal for us when his love for his people is too much his love for the humanity is too much swamiji would never accept something he will always tell no is this the best is this the best so people were looking for it it was like one day passed and in some kids of kids were still not having the uh, like not having the exact uh, agamic dress of the best quality that swamiji had told for and 
Swamiji came back and I still remember because all of us kids were there and our principal, all of them were there. And Swamiji told, all right, till the kids are getting the dress, I am going to wear complete, like I am going to uh, wearing any turban, anything stitched as till they get the Agamic dress of the best qualities. For the next two, three, for the next two, three days in the satsang, I think it was for almost five, six days. It was, it was continuous. And Swamiji is very clear. He wouldn't wear anything that is stitched. And see, when especially when Swamiji is coming, giving live satsang to people, he's conducting programs. And he just declares, no. See, any time, you might have seen parents, if you do a mistake, parents might be telling you, oh, do this, you will get the punishment. Right? Or even, even in your office, you're not performing good, you are fired. It is you who go through it. But here, even if we, if like, if we don't have something good, Swamiji, I wouldn't say something good, if like, we always have the best thing. If that quality Swamiji is expecting is not yet, like we are not having the clothes even to that best level that Swamiji is expecting, Swamiji will take it on himself. He will tell, okay, I am doing the Tyaga. I will be with the, I will uh, I'll wear just unstitched ones. I will not touch the stitched clothes. Actually, this, see, it is not just Swamiji telling not wear the stitched clothes. For the next, straight for the next few days, throughout day and night, Swamiji sat, made sure every single, you may ask, like running thousands of Kailasas and monastery campuses around the globe. Like, so of course, no one will have time. No one will, you know, think, okay, chala, I've told the principal, let them take it. No. Swamiji sat. I was there. I was like a first-hand witness to this whole incident. I was shocked. Like, how can someone love people so unconditionally? Swamiji sat. Day in and day out, made sure every single kid got few sets of clothes, not one dress uh, for namesake, no, few sets of clothes. And then the next next set was ordered. Swamiji sat till that, made sure. And the next, the after a few days, when all of us kids wore that proper, this, uh, this, the cotton of the highest quality that we all wore. Till all of us wore and came and sat in the satsang, Swamiji waited. Swamiji himself personally involved and made sure. See, what do you share this incident? For people to understand, it is not just saying, oh, come on, I have given money, uh, go build the listing, go do that. No. Swamiji mm -hmm. is directly, Swamiji involves in every single being. His unconditional love for the humanity is too much. That is why this hard work and on this being hands-on with everything in life. People are one, all of us devotees and all of us cannot fathom, cannot even understand Swamiji's love. But at the same time, it is this same hard work, involvement that all the anti-Hindu elements were not able to tolerate because when it comes to money, that I have actually, there are many times I have seen, uh, I have heard people share with me where, oh, just get the money, give, and everything is sorted. Actually, and that, is, that is very normal for people. Actually, see, since we grew up in Gurukul, we keep seeing Swamiji where he personally involves. And when I started meeting other people, and when I started reading, like, you know, the, like, many people where they are known as very good people in the society because they are good. They want to do charity, and what they do, the charity work would be they would give up money, and because of that money, many people get benefited. That's great. But what really, really was something unimaginable was how much work that Swamiji does. See, for example, as simple as now, um, and there are some programs. Like just to have the darshan of Swamiji. Sometimes like at least like 3,000, 4,000 people from Tamil Nadu will come. And they'll come. It will be all free of course. Like some special days. All of them will come to have darshan of Swamiji. Swamiji will personally go to the kitchen. He will check the taste of the food. He will check the quality of the food. He will make sure everything is proper. 
this food will not they, not like uh, at least like 3000 4000 people would have come not to single one of them will pay a penny for it means they are not asked to pay for it it's given completely free of cost somebody will go he'll personally check he'll make sure everything not just its best quality but also agamic he'll make sure everything is done hygienically and completely agamic he'll check personally check and then he'll go and sit and start giving the darshan and when he gives the darshan it will go on for hours together he will start somewhere in the afternoon and it will go on till midnight sometimes till the next day morning so many people would have come he will not move from the seat continuously giving and side by side ensuring everything there are people getting are the people getting rudraksha malas are the, and all these given for free i was shocked when someone asked me oh how much you had to pay for this rudraksha mala someone one person messaged me telling i also need to buy is this very costly is this very expensive where do you buy it only then i cognize oh my god i've been given all these it's like some just gives it as gifts to us and so even same way people get all a uh, rudraksha if you know like if you know the value of the rudraksha mala you would be amazed to know that some just gives free kanta malas these are called as kanta malas completely free of cost to any anyone who comes some just make sure that they are receiving the healing leaf they are receiving the basma packet like the energized basma sacred ash everybody gets the best food personally he would ensure that is something that i won't be able to even comprehend how is he able to do it continuously that involvement see today you, if many many of you here who are tuned in you might be knowing that there is a huge like we both are being attacked by our own purvashram parents who are trying to use us like that the abuser parents who are trying to use us to attack swami ji and they put a false case uh, on swami ji and they are trying to use us as weapons for it they are claiming us as kidnapped people and they want uh, us to be killed and the whole court is also still not giving the justice to us it's almost been a year and we are still struggling for it see as even a normal person like if you would have been in our situation let's say you didn't know much about swami ji you would have simply told okay even if my parents are doing like that i'll do i'll i'll just go and say yes i'll i'll just go to their side you might say that of course they are extremely abusive but i'm just telling like in a sort of situation but what is it which is making us again and again we know see not just that yes the truth is in swami ji also this level of hard work his involvement his tyaga the sacrifices he has done we have been first hand witness to it we have experienced it ourselves that hard work that tyaga today so many of you who are here tuned in now you might all be wondering oh wow you might be wowed about kailasa you might be wowed about the currency that some just given but how much of hard work is behind it how much he's actually done for it that is something unimaginable uncomprehendable in each dimension as i was explaining education seven years can you all believe it seven years have been paid a single penny till now be it the food be it best organic food and best uh, highest education international gcc you all might be knowing the international gcc system it's one of very like best education you can get out there and i've done business courses in best universities be it getting my degree everything or my tra- travels like if i want to go visit a place go and uh, go to temples or the devices that i wanted to use everything like this there are thousands or in dalinam and there are millions all across in various kailasas across the globe who have been grown like this whom somji is no not a single opposite pay even a single penny 
completely Swamiji is like amazingly taking care and continuing to do it. That yoga, that sacrifice that he is doing again and again, just so that nothing, there is nothing as an obstacle. First experience at enlightenment, and and just because Paramashiva has said in the Agama that knowledge is for free, Swamiji is doing it and showing. You might have heard philosophers talking, oh, knowledge should be given for free, and they will charge you. I had never seen someone living it except for Swamiji. Actually, this, see, when we all are knowing, when we all are seeing so much of hard work that Swamiji is doing, and talking, yeah, we can go on talking about this. But we all also need to know that so much of persecution and attack that has been happening. See, when you see something good happening, there are different ways people will respond. Some will feel, wow, it's impossible for someone to do this. And if someone is doing it, they are great. Some people will feel, all right, at least someone is not just talking, is actually doing. Let us cheer him up, let us support. Some will feel that I want to be a part of it. I, I'm inspired, like I want to be of this, a part of this great happening. And some will feel there's something happening, let me just go and see what is happening. There are some who will feel that, oh, let me go and see. From If he's doing so much of work, there must be support. Let me suck out everything. Let me get all the benefits. Why he's giving free? I just put why I have, why should I work and pay for my kids? Let them go study for free. Just them. And They'll be, they'll just feel, okay, why, if I can live for free, we will tell in Tamil, Osila Varadhe, just for that context, they will go. And just suck out the best from it, and not just that, some even more venomous people, Dravisham, venomous people, will just go to destroy Telling how can someone do so much of hard work if he's if there's so much of money he's putting for people, I might as well take that and then just destroy it. Actually, if you see this, like this is something you might be thinking about like how can such people exist? Like, people actually exist like that. When they see something, they're good, they want to suck out as much as possible and destroy. I used to wonder, like when I read about Duryodhana. In Mahabharata, I was wondering how can such a person exist in reality? Like how is he's going to kill his own people and he doesn't feel anything about it inside and he's being so violent, he's doing everything like so adharmic. He knows it and isn't he still affected by it? That's when when I read the Bhagavad Gita book of Swamiji, I understood. When a person yeah. becomes so animalistic, they lose the ability to think. They become too destructive. All they want to do is suck out as much as possible and destroy. That is when I was able to very clearly map it and see the people like that she was referring to. I have not heard about such people because whom I have been, uh, I should say, I have been a victim of being used as a tool by that very people. Well, who I am talking about is... Kuldari Janardhan, who I should, I'm so just, if you just see for the last 40 minutes, when I was about the different, 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 different aspects of hard work of Swamiji's that I have seen, it's just one, one percent of it, one bit of it, because it's a lot more. But I just want to tell, seeing this, when it is inspiring all of us, it is like making all of us like so want to be a part of it. This Kuldari Janardhan was part, was a mastermind in that Dravish gang. It was a group of them who plotted to destroy Swamiji's mission, to suck out the money, to suck out all the best when they saw, Swamiji will just declare, like she was uh, sharing about another, and that's just one aspect. We're just giving an example. How much will it take to serve the people, that hundreds and thousands of people that walk around the Giriwala mountain in Thiruvannamalai? It is, it is, there are thousands of people and you're going to serve all of the meal, just that one they will take so much of money. I'm just uh, explaining for you all to understand logically. 
for you to run a family of four or five and feed the family with normal food it costs so much for you to give food for thousands of people that are visiting especially at every pournami there are at least 2 million people who visit so just that tiruvannamalai is just one sarvagnya peetham uh, around the world that, uh, out of the thousands that we have and that itself i can very easily like i'm not sure about the uh, cost because i'm not very aware of the um, money but i'm just telling it will cost a lot especially the organic sattvic meal that is being provided tiruvannamalai is just one example but tiruvannamalai madurai vidadi there are so many places i can name where every day organic sattvic meal is being served for free i am when being served i am not talking about just to us who are inside who are monastic members no served to the common public to the people imagine how much of swamiji is just giving to people no when we all listen we all will not care we will just like we know the uh, we all will what we will care about is swamiji's love for the people but when some people listen to this they will think oh tiruvannamalai madurai then so many places how much of money he must be putting into it why not go and take and use that money for my life that is exactly how kullari janardan stock current was oh, understand when someone this is so much and swamiji himself personally does all this he makes sure everywhere the money is going he makes sure he calls and ensures that the person the meals are being prepared understand like she was explaining we have at least 2 million people easily who circumambulate the tiruvannamalai hill even if you take for once like let's say per plate like one like one meal might cost in its organic especially it easily can cost uh, the cost for of making it will be at least 200 to 300 rupees especially the variety of the dishes that is being made i'm talking about like when you just divide it in a base unit and see so how much of money is being spent on that what this culinary decided to do was like this he wanted to note where all the money is going and where all it is being used for an adhana like where the annadhan is being done free food is being served he wanted that quality of the food to reduce so he can loot the entire money so here when the organization like when the administrators they are giving the money the money is but the output like the he wanted to change the vendors so he can reduce the amount given to the vendors and the rest he can loot it to his pinami account this was what kunari's plan dirty cheap plot was like this in multiple places he wanted to do it he started doing every time swamiji would tell swamiji would see it see swamiji is too involved so whenever it uh, swamiji finds out swamiji just he will not tell anything to him to just allow him to transform to compassionate see if swamji knows like okay if he tells something maybe the children might get affected swamji is very 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 patient just giving him more possibility 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 but the kulnari was a demon he has abused us that is why we don't even want to call him as our father we feel so cheap to call kulari as our father we feel very ashamed to even tell he is our father is because of this he is so abusive and that person the cheap stir he didn't stop he didn't stop his looting he has looted crores of rupees is looted crores of rupees in multiple ways and he wanted to he goes out and gossip so badly so cheaply actually even all these are too small i should tell because that dirty cheap conspiracy 
He is a mastermind behind so many different attacks on Swamiji. Physically, directly trying to assassinate Swamiji. Swamiji's food was poisoned by him and his wife. See, looting, even if you are a... See, I'm not telling stealing is correct, but I'm telling even if there are some people who will steal, that is okay to a level, but he is not just that. Understand? Directly assassinating, attempting to assassinate Swamiji in order to kill Swamiji. Directly poisoned the food that Swamiji was going to have. Actually, he directly handed over the. I think you can. You yeah, need yeah. to share the. So he that. actually handed over the poison to me. I didn't even know it was a poison, and he gave like in a wrap. He had a small bottle, and it was wrapped with a lot of tissue papers and in a plastic cover. He told carefully open it. He told, "Oh, you, know, you don't know. Swamiji might be under some black magic. That is why these attacks are all happening to Swamiji. If you want to protect Swamiji, go put this uh, liquid in his food. This liquid will remove all black magic." I got and uh, it's. And it was the smell of it was very metallic, very metallic, and it it's a it's a different smell. It was very pungent smelling, and it was very metallic. And and he told he told uh, don't tell Swamiji, don't tell anyone else. You just go add this. That don't tell anyone else rang an alarm in me, and I was like, why I shouldn't tell anyone? Then I I won't do it. And I gave it back to him, and I I and. As much as possible, I used to try, like going away from the conversations with him. If especially even if if you've come for any program in Dadinam, he like you might have seen he'll try talking to me, and I'll give some reason to just go because I I never felt comfortable with him. That is why, like, see, even when he was there living there, I used I used to never live with him, never be with him, talk to him much. No, I I didn't like it. So. He he gave that to me, and I I fought with him. I argued with him. I asked why I shouldn't tell anyone. Then what is this? He told, no no no, because only this uh, black magic. This will remove black magic. This will work only if you don't tell to anyone. And I got really. It was something. It felt fishy for me, and I gave it off. And I came or I felt disgusted. Somehow I was very uncomfortable, and I went off. Later, his. Much later, when his wife had also come, and she was very insistent that he, she has to be uh, in Swamiji's kitchen. She wants to cook for Swamiji. Then, after some lot of uh, arguing, then the administrators agreed. She went to Swamiji's kitchen. She poisoned a uh, food, and I, I remember that just that morning when I had gone into the kitchen, I opened her bag like normally was talking to her. And I wanted a pin or something, so I opened her bag. She she told that it's just there in the bag. She was in the kitchen. I opened and I saw the same the same one that uh, he had tried handing over to me. And I asked what it was. And she immediately she just uh, grabbed the bag from me and she told uh, uh, go go don't touch my bag no go away. She she just pushed me aside and I I just came off. Later that evening. What she had served some food to Swamiji, and moment Swamiji ate that, immediately Swamiji said that it had a very metallic taste, and Swamiji kept the food aside. Swamiji is not someone who will see the taste, but first time like Swamiji ate it, and Swamiji kept it aside, telling it is the there's something else in it, like it had a lot of metallic taste, and Swamiji's uh, he started like sweating, and the heart rate went high. He became breathless. Immediately, the doctors came and checked. See, that's the and first that, time. Uh, yeah, and uh, and that time immediately she had somehow gone out of the place, and uh, she and pe and people uh, like the doctors had come immediately to check what happened. They checked the food. That's when they came to know it was poison. It contained a poison, some uh, heavy mercury content in it. And after this thing happening, when people were questioned, like uh, the administrators are checking, who, what happened, how did this get poisoned? Was it some, uh, if there was a vegetable that was poisoned, or what exactly? 
from where what is the source of it that evening itself kulri ran away from bathi she didn't pick up the calls then only then when we checked like when we checked the dustbin like where we saw the bottle i was shocked because that was the same bottle which that kulnari tried giving me and that the kulnari's wife had poisoned swamiji i was shocked understand like this is just one example of how you might have seen in movies you might have read in stories how if someone is doing good always the hero will try doing good but villains will be attacking it's happening in real life that i'm seeing where some because some is doing so much good demons villains like this kulnari cheap kulnari janardan they attack they want to eliminate some they want to kill some and this is one incident one such incident he has been behind even any car accident you can actually share when that when you went there are so many incidents where we have been a first hand witness to see how he directly has attempted to assassinate swami ji please understand because i do not want people to just think oh maybe he would just wanted to see that itself is a crime i don't think i'm supporting it that itself is a crime but i'm just telling you all that is not it he is a uh, he is part of that gang the dravish gang that grouped together came in, actually if you see they all will have a like a proper gap how they all of them will have a similar pattern they all will come in the guise of a devotee and attempt to assassinate swami ji if chitrut is found they will run away from the adina overnight and go and abuse about swami ji this has been the and then we all discovered this kulnari janardan when we encountered him for his financial embezzlement when we asked him face to face directly about his intentions then he threatened us telling he i i still remember he called me and he started telling me telling we i had to sign just come out and sign a paper so that a complaint can be put on swami ji please understand this whole group of the, all of them used the political clout and of course i am sure all of us being in india it's not something uh, very strange for us we see there are so many ways that corruption can happen but this is the first time that i saw actually it is real that people like where someone can use he used his political contacts and his media contacts blackmail even media knows that he is a blackmailer that's even in spite of that just for their cheap trp all the media national media national news channels published false news putting some editing our videos in out of context playing the videos we all need to understand that kulnari janardan did not just do financial embezzlement he is part of that group he is a master mind who attempted various assassination attempts directly on swami ji and has has committed many heinous crimes which many of it which we are a witness of i think now it's time let's get ready let's move on to the next segment the most awaited segment for all of us having the darshan of the avatar let's prepare for it let's prepare ourselves to receive the avatar with the small meditation you sit with your head neck and spine in a straight line close your eyes breathe in and breathe out deeply and slowly now start chanting the mahavakya om nityananda paramashivoham intensely inside you allowing your whole space to get purified 
will now be playing the mahavakya you all can listen to it close your eyes and chant continue om nityananda varama shivo please chant the mahavakya om nityananda varama shivo ham ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवो हम ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवो हम ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवो हम
Connecting with the Divine, with your eyes closed, is meditation. Connecting with the Divine, with your eyes open, is darshan. Come, let us all now move from meditation to darshan. Slowly, very slowly, please open your eyes. Inna panna lava, inna panna lava, inta yumal lava, inta yumal lava, tannai munan tidum dhyana malikava, inna panna lava, inta yumal lava, tannai munan tidum dhyana malikava, inna nirengava, inna kadandava, kungu marumiya, yana dandandava, inna nirengava, inna kadandava, kungu Yeah, yeah, I'm done. 
I welcome you all with my love and respect. I welcome all the living and practicing Hindus, Sarvangyak Petakartas, Ejamans, Manifestors, Sarvabari Yagi, Sri Mahans, Mahans, Kailasas, Ministers, Ambassadors, Diplomats, E Diplomats, Consulate Generals, and supporters, citizens, Paramashvaganas, Mantreshwaras, Vidyeshwaras, Astreshwaras, Lokeshwaras, Ganeshwaras of Kailasa. I welcome all of you with my love and respect. Paramashiva's message directly from Kailasa. Listen. Time and space
the continuum of time and space is due to a stuff connecting both that stuff is called maya tattva in vedic tradition it is not there but it is there because the time and space both the dimensions do not have a clear border kind of a water tight compartment border no understand this very intensely for example if time and space put together is 100 meter consider an 100 meter cloth as time and space for some people 60 meter is time only 40 meter is space for some people only 30 meter is time 70 meter is space the time and space continuum and the way it exists as reality for you is not the way it exists as reality for others that is why some people are so excited to wake up in the morning some people feel oh god i don't know why i need to open my eyes listen carefully the outer world reality is perceived between certain frequencies like i gave the example 20 hertz to 20000 hertz sound only can be perceived by any normal human being below 20 hertz or above 20000 hertz you can't perceive it you can't hear it if you experience it's something extraordinary yesterday i saw bhagwan reddy's wife supraja when i was giving the satsang itself she was getting into that mood of anagata dhvani means the the sound which is higher frequency than the 20000 hertz supraja the experience you had which you have not shared with anyone is true i saw it was happening in her understand one thing just like the sound below the 20 hertz above the 20000 hertz can be heard by normal man but it can be heard by extraordinary capability same way this reality which all of us are commonly sharing with the word called world this is also between certain frequency for example we will give the same like sound 20 unit maya to 20000 unit maya it's only an example i am giving you between the 20 unit maya 20000 unit maya the hertz for sound maya for the reality i am using maya word as a unit for reality between 20 unit maya to 20000 unit maya all of us common human beings can experience it as world as reality if it goes below 20 unit are about 20 20000 
thousand unit, you start manifesting powers. Listen. If you unclutch intensely, it will go below twenty unit. Maya. You become pure intense. If you go about twenty thousand unit Maya. you become pure devotion feeling connection but in both you experience oneness suddhadvaita sugabodham one beautiful thing this clarity whether you unclutch and reach below 20 unit maya or practice devotion feel connected and reach above 20000 unit maya you experience the same oneness sutta advaita sugabodham if i initiate you into power man your whole body mind starts getting grounded in that one space sutta advaita sugaboda what you manifest is shakti not ordinary siddhi because in our power manifestation the more you practice practice more you get grounded in enlightenment you can see our kids the more they manifest the powers more they get detox means more they get grounded pure settled enlightened whenever my kids throw tantrum the first thing i'll do i'll somehow convince them to sit and do power manifest either third eye or akashic reading akashic reading is best because kalabhairava when he lands he cleanses the house completely thoroughly <laughs> kalabhairava is acid wash for consciousness Alvaravai is best. Whenever my kids do Akashi reading, I've always seen they get settled so much, they get grounded so much. I tell you, Alvaravai is the best god. He generates such powerful ex. joy enlighten now i'll make simple statement just internalize them because yesterday such one i was giving more like a hints the upanishads are more like a hints only the conclusions punch line i am putting it now along with the punch lines the connecting thread sutre manigana iva length breadth depth is the known dimensions of the universe even as per the modern day scientists time and space is 
kind of a half known yet to be explored yet to be fully known still remains mysterious for the grasp of ordinary human minds but the length breadth depth is most comfortably conveniently at least understood dimensions of the known reality world i am developing the special super brain where my gurukul kit just like the scientists are able to decode reveal everything related to length breadth depth my kits will reveal everything related to time and space that is why i insist on them not eating outside food understand see the gurukul food adinam food the food is offered to deities which are literally living archavatara gods this another one technique my gurus used to use they will insist that i eat the food offered in the temple arunachaleshwara temple which was offered to paramashiva and kupamal used to do regular puja abhishegams whenever i am getting trained into some new initiation which will be always yep, at least once a week once a week they will do some new initiation process on me training sometimes they will tell me directly hey this is not required for you but you need to learn the procedure so you can train others you can revive it Swami is the great Siddha, Siddha, the great enlightened being. He will somehow call people from Himalayas, this corner, that corner of India, who are well-known adepts in those fields and sciences. and teach me that science that knowledge transmit that experience sometimes due to my laziness i'll try to throw tantrum to isaki swami oh you know nirahara samyama why are you forcing me to go and learn from malai chinarayana swami we had one swami who used to be sitting on the top of the hill to meet him i have to walk almost for quite a long time he was sitting inside the temple itself terku kattai go from the western tower which used to be inside the tirumanjana go from used to be sitting and after some time he started staying in top of the hill so you say swami will insist kupamal will insist that i go there to have his darshan it's almost like 2 hours or 3 hours walking up and then down when i ask him oh you know the science why don't you teach why are you asking me to go there he used to smile and say you should not disrespect whatever is said and done his expertise in that field and the intensity with which he can just transmit it into your bio memory is unique so you just go and do what i am saying
he used to give an example in Trivannamalai. He had used to have shop, that village shop. In Tamil, he will tell. Adai Maliya Kadili Yenna Kadikmuda Aprayanda Krishna Murti Mama Yenna Kadikitaniya Pora. One person, Krishna Murti, used to have shop only for oil. Sikhi Swami used to say, in regular grocery shop also you get oil. But why do you go specially to his shop? Because he himself has all the complete infrastructure needed to make the oil and he does it very sincerely, organically and he sells only oil. He will give this an example and tell me, go and learn. I also wanted to tell all of you, always eat only consecrated food, eat only prasada, eat only once a day, make that as a lifestyle, Kanchibra Midli, as I said. I can add some 25 variety of sacred food, Kanchibra Midli. Melakota Puliodre, Srivili Buttura Kara Vadisal, Sirupadi Laddu, Jagannatha Mahaprasadam. All this, just have the recipe, cook any one of this. Offer to deity and eat only once a day. It's all amazing traditional food recipe. Understand? Whether you know it or not, realize it or not, your thought current and your reality is not separated by any wall or any border. What you again and again persistently put in your Space starts manifesting in your time. What you again and again and again practice in your time starts manifesting in your space. As I said, this time and space does not have a clear cut border. For some people, in this time space continuum, in the time space dimension, if it is a hundred meter, consider it as a hundred meter long class. For some people, seventy meter is time and thirty meter is space. For some people, thirty meter is time, seventy meter is space. For some people, even only two meter is time and ninety eight meter is space. For some people, ninety eight meter is time and two meter is space. When the length dimension starts manifesting its possibilities in all its multiple level, it gives birth to breadth dimension. When the length dimension and breadth dimension both starts manifesting all its possibilities in multiple level, 
it gives birth to depth dimension when the length dimension depth dimension breadth dimension all three starts giving birth to all the infinite dimensions of them in multiple levels in all possibility spontaneously and simultaneously they give birth to the dimension called time when length breadth depth time all four starts exploding expanding simultaneously spontaneously manifesting all its possibility in all dimension it gives birth to the dimension called space and every time i initiate you i put the seed in your space dimension so it just occupies your whole being and start manifesting starts manifesting as samadhi as enlightenment as joy as bliss as state of paramashiva as space of paramashiva as powers of paramashiva Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Just from the space of Parama Shiva, with the grace of Ganapati. From the space of Parama Shiva, the pure super conscious energy. I'll now initiate all of you 
into the space of Paramashiva, state of Paramashiva, powers of Paramashiva, being of Paramashiva, superconsciousness of Paramashiva, giving you the experience of Kailasa of Paramashiva, Paramashiva's Kailasa. Sit straight. Let me help you. Just simply intone your being with this sound Maha Sabda. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 
appreciate all of you and bless all of you to intensely start manifesting the state of parama shiva space of parama shiva powers of parama shiva being of parama shiva super consciousness of parama shiva I have a Shastra Pramana from Manusmriti on eating consecrated food, Prasada, Chapter 2, 55th Sloka. Poojitam Yasanam Nityam Palamurjam Cha Yachati Abhujitam Tu Tatbuktam Ubayam Nasayeditam, eating the food that is consecrated, offered in worship, the prasadam always gives energy and strength. Eating non consecrated food destroys both energy and strength. This is one of my vision. For the future, having thousands of, or I should say, even millions of the restaurant chain, which provides consecrated food, prasadam food, without demanding any certain amount or cost, we do it as a service to Paramashiva. You can voluntarily donate, you can donate one rupee or one coin or half dollar or one dollar or one euro or you can say, no, I don't have money today, I don't want to, I am, I don't have anything, so I don't want to give. You can say, I have money, but I don't have a mood to give, that is also okay. <laughs> At least, see, we already have De facto spiritual embassies in four digit, surely in four digit. At least the bigger embassies of Kailasa should start this. I wanted to really, really, really inspire all the Kailasa Vasis, Adinavasis living in. different countries in some countries 
we have a de facto spiritual embassy status in some countries the embassy status in some so wherever in some countries we are a temple in some countries we are just a monastery various status as per the legal standards of each country you will be surprised to know in many countries countries recognized by un in many countries hinduism is not even accepted as a religion we are working now with many of those countries and educating them about hinduism and making them accept hinduism as a religion anyhow that is diplomatic responsibility of kailasa that's different all i want is at least all our active ashrams centers adinams temples universities gurukuls de facto spiritual embassies all of you without violating your local law should implement this vision preparing organic food offering it to paramashiva and serving it to people with the principle of eat as much as you want pay as much as you want or instead of pay let us use the word donate eat as much as you want donate as much as you want this kind of chain of restaurants should be important service activity of kailasa see as on now we are providing food for our adinavasi sanyasis gurukul balasans in temples the visitors we should expand it into the restaurant level eat as much as you want pay as much as you want we should even start providing the parcel service and i tell you when you do the good work always wealth is showered wealth will never be a problem just you need a sincerity and start simple hard work so the whole history of kailasa in kannada there is a beautiful proverb kayakave kailasa simple hard work is kailasa <laughs> kayakave kailasa kailasa in one line or i should say one word simple hard work that's it everything gathers everything you manifest we should start this this simple simple hard work amal tarun das is asking our time and space from prakriti is so then which is having more sattva guna space or time we learn from swami ji that prakriti is having three gunas tamal tarun your your question let me put it very clearly prakriti has three gunas no doubt when i use the word prakriti which has three gunas
it means it should be understood like which has three gunas which gives birth to the whole nature the reality component of the existence the vyakta component of avyakta the manifest component of unmanifest see the unmanifest can become manifest component only from the womb of trigunas sattva rajas tamas but that does not mean the space should have tamas and rajas time has tamas rajas sattva no doubt but the space has only pure sattva it does not have rajas tamas understand because prakriti has all the trigunas does not mean all her children should have all trigunas no prakriti has some children who don't have all three gunas so understand space is pure sattva sutta sattva existence is space time as very minimal amount of rajas and tamas which is needed for it to function as circle understand length functions in length <laughs> breadth functions as breadth depth functions as length breadth depth time functions a circle space exists does not function but can be winded up into consciousness chit devi parashakti prakriti she is established on chit and manifests like parashakti is sitting on paramashiva's lap she is established in chit but manifests that length breadth depth time space so tamal tarun understand time and space are from prakriti that is the answer for your first part the question is so the second part of your question which is having more sattva guna i should say space is absolute sattva but don't start judging time as something lower than space sometimes you need little rajas and tamas for circling it's same time as it's purpose to exist it has its own purpose so to complete its purpose it needs little rajas and tamas so don't judge first things drop this neo vedantic stupid ideas of tamas and rajas are something lower than sattva understand sattva is needed for your higher level of existence but you are not expected to hate rajas and tamas one of the major binaryification of great hinduism is done by this modern day neo vedantis max mullerian translation see you need sattva you need to be established in sattva but you will never be established in sattva if you 
think rajas and tamas are something lower than you because anything you think is lower than your need you will continuously be hating and fighting with them indirectly you will be developing more and more rajas and tamas in the name of love for sattva <laughs> understanding sattvas need understanding the place of rajas in prakriti and place of tamas in prakriti makes you intelligent sattvic being do not make this binary subtle assumptions which even you don't spell it out to you this question kamal tarun please understand this question as an underlying contempt about tamas and rajas i know you love me too much and we we have beautiful very sweet relationship that is why i am revealing please don't be hurt i am not hurting you and also want to convey tell your son i love him and love you <laughs> to listen listen to this there's underlying thought current which is having more sattva guna understand when you ask which is having more sattva guna space or time there is underlying contempt about tamas and rajas do not have it you are chit consciousness you need to be established in sattva but that does not mean you should not have rajas or you should not have tamas tamas and rajas has their own purpose when you are established in sattva you will know the real purpose of tamas and rajas actually when my kids write their reminiscences about how i teach them and train them you will get a real version of complete hinduism fortunately i did not let them read this maximalarian translations of hindu scriptures fortunately last 20 years amazing works have come the hindu practitioners have translated hindu scriptures first of all many of my kids have started picking up sanskrit directly by initiation and even the kids who need english translation last 20 years lots of i wanted all of you to know that this vedic upanishads book which i am using as a textbook for all our kids to learn upanishads it's such such wonderful translation so much the translator and the team is integrated to shastras so the compulsion of the maximalarian translation and neo vedantic that current centric translation is no more needed because the practitioners have started translating the practicing hindus have started translating that's a beautiful thing and the third part of 
your question we learnt from swami ji that prakriti is having three gunas tamal tarum i already solved it yes prakriti has all three gunas that does not mean everything came out of prakriti should have all these three gunas so tamal tarum love you and tell your son rohan das love you avoid max mullers and max mullerian translations of hindu scriptures because yeah binary ideas this or that yes or no does not bring knowledge understand knowledge is ability to perceive the reality in all its multiple forms of existence not postmortem life is not postmortem papa doesn't speak fluently skandamata she has not started speaking any ordinary person will be very worried <gasps> she's not started speaking i said hey relax kumara guru bara did not speak not that he was dumb or deaf no he was just waiting for subramanya to <laughs> initiate so he can start straight singing <laughs> same way papa is just waiting she will start straight conducting satsangs and initiations <laughs> she is just waiting <laughs> to come and be with me in kailasa she will straight sit next to me in the sarvanya pita and start taking classes <laughs> giving satsangs <laughs> understand a binary logic person can never understand what i am talking anyhow when she does it you guys will understand there is a great saint kumara guru varar he did not speak for quite a long time i think at least some 7 8 years they took him to tiruchendur subramanya swami temple he just started singing directly that's all <laughs> on subramanya <laughs> there are many references in hindu tradition for this kind of genius happenings hmm? papa doesn't speak not because she has something less or she is not capable no she is capable of too much so she doesn't want to speak ordinary small small stupid things she says i will speak when i need to speak when amma appan says i'll speak what i need to speak <laughs> otherwise she's too sharp everything happening around her she knows you can't control her but she doesn't speak <laughs> skanda literally skanda subramanya Hmm. Hastamalaka also did not speak until 
Shankaracharya came and initiated. Hmm? So, we have a lot of references. So, before concluding the today's satsang, Ivan Kamat, Sona Kamat's son, Ivan Kamat, blessings on your birthday with all the auspiciousness, you will be with me, I will be with you. Blessings. Ma Parvati, Ma Parvati's daughter Vaishnavi, blessings for your, on your birthday. Trinidad Tobacco, Ma Parvati, blessings. Ivan Kamat, Sona Kamat's son, blessings. I do have some more revelations about the Kailasa's administration structure, Paramashiva's administration structure in Kailasa, we are just mapping it into Hindu parliament, the first avarana, the five avaranas described in Kamikagama, how it exists in Kailasa, first avarana, Mantreshwaras, second avarana, Vidyeshwaras, Third Avarana, Ganeshwaras. Fourth Avarana, Lokeshwaras. Fifth Avarana, Astreshwaras. So, Karanikayam Yaje Devam. Brahmangaischa Samavritam Ganeshaihi Lokapalaischa Hedivir Vajrapurvahai On the pericarp of the lotus feet, lotus seat, you should worship Lord Shiva as surrounded by the Brahma mantras, Agna mantras, Vidyeshwaras, sorry, Anga mantras, Vidyeshwaras, Ganas, Lokapalas and Ayudas. Hmm? This is the Purva Bhaga of Kamikagama, 4th Patalam, Archanavidhi Patalam, 187th Sloka. Hmm? Karanikayam Yaje Devam Brahmanga Ischa Samavritam Ganeshaiki Lokapala Ischa Hedibir Vajrapur Vagai On the pericarp of the lotus seat you should worship Lord Shiva Surrounded by the Brahma Mantras and Anga Mantras Vidyeshwaras Ganas Lokapalas Ayudas So with this, I bless you all. Let's all radiate. With integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching, causing, living Shuddhatvaita Saivam, the state, space, powers, being, superconsciousness, and Kailasa of Paramashiva. Paramashivoham. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. The eternal bliss, Nityananda. Thank you. Be blissful. Shri 
कैलासोन्नतवादशाश्यामला पीठारूढ़ श्री मीनाक्षि सुंदरेश्वरा भिन्न स्वूप परशिवपुत्र रन कुमार गुरमण्यतुल्यावतार श्री पार्वती स्तन्यपानल दिव्य ज्ञान विश्रुत सकल निगमागम सारूत द्राविड वेद प्रवक्त्रे श्रीमत्म शिव करुणा सधिगत मुक्तामय चतुश्रयान जीयमान छत्र चामर श्री चिन्ह कालादिस्तरदावल्यलंकृत ज्ञान विज्ञान चक्रवर्ती सर्वजन संघ सद्यो निर्वाण दीक्षा व्ययापवर्ग वर्ष विश्राण जीमूत परमत कलभकेसरी शैव सिद्धांत स्थापनाचार्य श्रीराजाधिराज पांड्य महाराज गुरु क्षपण शाक्यादि महांधकार निवारण ज्ञान भानु वीक्षणानर्हाध्वजोच्छेदन पूर्वक श्रीमद्वृषभध्वजस्थापक शैव समय कर्त्रे सर्वज्ञपीठारूढ़ श्री जगद्गु श्री ज्ञान संबंध देशिकस्वामी वागीश सुंदर माणिक्यवाचक स्वामीना अवतार भूत श्री ज्ञान संबंध स्वामी पुनरुद्धृत श्यामला पीठ सर्वज्ञपीठ तृणवत्युतर श्री परम शिव सूत कैलास परंपरागत वैवस्वतमुक्ष्वाक हरिश्चंद्र भगीरथ श्रीरामचंद्र शूर इत्यादि अणवच्छिन्न सार्वभम चक्रवर्ति परंपरागत चतुष्टि योगिनी मंडित चतुष्टि संप्रदाय प्रवर्तक मनुधर्म शासन सूर्यवंश प्राप्त सर्वज्ञपीठ सुरांगी साम्राज्य मूर्धाभिषिक्त चूड़ामणे साक्षात्ी परम शिव सूत कपिल महागुर पुनरुद्धृत महानिर्वाणी पीठ अष्टोत्तर सहस्र श्री महामंडलेश्वर साक्षात्ी परम शिव सिंहासनाषिक्त समस्त गणनायक श्री महागणपति सरंभ अनवच्छिन्न पीठाधीश्वर गुरु परंपरा प्राप्त अटल पीठ अष्टोत्तर सहस्रतम अष्टोत्तर सहस्र श्री अटल पीठाधीश्वर धर्म मुक्ति स्वर्ग पुस्वर्ण पीठ त्रयोविश गुर महासन्निधान कैलास परंपरागत आदिपीठ सर्वज्ञ पीठ जगद्गु श्री कैलास पुनरुद्धारक श्री कैलास परमाचार्य श्रीमत्मस परिव्रज काचार्य वर्य सच्चिदानंद प्रणवस्व श्रोत्रिय ब्रह्म निष्ठ श्रीमज्जगद्गु श्रील श्री भगवत्श्री निनंद परम शिव श्री ज्ञान संबंध देशिक परमाचार्य स्वामीन अत्रगत्य पिपाल्य चस्मान विज्ञान वितरण विजयी भव विजयी भव जय जय